this video is about to fulfill every single one of my 2012 YouTube girly dreams. But it's been requested by a lot of people, so welcome to Social Work Essentials. Whether you are an intern, a new social worker like myself, or you're a seasoned social worker and you're here to see if you agree with what I say is essential. Got my bag ready, and I'm excited for this one. Of course, I have to say this. If you're new, hi, my name is Anna. I am a baby MSW. I graduated in May of this year, and I'm now working as a mental health clinician in a youth detention center. I'm currently working on pursuing my license, so I'll become an LMSW. I'm not there yet. Yet, but I've now gone through two social work field placements and about two months being actually in the field and YouTube has seen it all. <laughs> that being said, because I work in a jail, sometimes my essentials are going to be a little bit different. So I adjusted. These are exactly my essentials because I can't bring everything I want to into jail with me. That's why this bag is clear though, because for security reasons, we get checked in every morning. And so we have to have a clear bag so they can see everything that I'm bringing in, meaning I leave a lot of things there. And so this is a little curated bag, but I promise it is still true to what I use in a day. <laughs> so my guess is if you're watching this video most likely you're new of some sort kind of like myself and so the number one social work essential that is a must for everyone to have don't laugh at me when I say it I promise we'll get to the actual things in my bag after this one is that you have to find your why as social workers obviously it is very easy to lose sight of the greater purpose to maybe forget why you actually got into the field maybe start to feel a little burnt out a little numb but all of us have some sort of reason why we got into the field and so that's why I say it's essential to have your why kind of easy access so that on day whenever you're starting and it starts to feel harder and it maybe was an emotionally taxing day and you're thinking, why am I even in this field? Have something on hand that can remind you why. So a couple of these items for me, just as an example for you, I have this canvas that if you've watched my day in the life of a school social worker, my second video on this channel ever, you'll see me receive this canvas. But this was from a preschool class that I taught socio-emotional learning to whenever I was in my BSW field placement. And on my last day, one of the teachers gave me this and it has every single one of the preschoolers thumbprints stamped around it. And it says, social worker making a difference in the lives of others. And so this I've just had on my desk ever since the day I received it because it is a Memento both to my first internship, but then also to those sweet little faces that I remember. And then I had the opportunity to both teach some like coping skills and emotional intelligence too, but then also see it be used by them. So they were really special to me, meaning this is really special to me. So this is something I reference back to. Another memento that's really important to me is this little picture frame. And I'm covering the faces of people just for privacy for them, you know? But over here, this is a child that I met whenever I took a trip to Guatemala right before my freshman year of college. And it was on that trip that I learned what social work was and both decided within the week that I wanted to do that. And I got back home and immediately called the University of Alabama and changed my major to social work because I did not originally apply as a social work major. But I spent a week at kind of like a group home for victims of both extreme physical and sexual abuse and also sex trafficking in Guatemala. And it was, like I said, while I was there that I learned and saw what social workers could do and it obviously changed my life. So I keep these pictures around and I remember these people so I can grab onto my why as it's needed. Yours will look different than mine, but I just say that because there will be hard days as you're becoming a social social worker starting that and having little things that can bring you back to what got you into it, why you're doing it are absolutely essential. Now that I'm off my soapbox though, number two essential for being a social worker is to always have some sort of agenda or calendar. And the technique that you use, the calendar that you use will definitely take some trial and error just because everybody's brain works differently and how you can organize. This is one that I just totally fabricated because I obviously can't show you my actual calendar and clients and because it's at jail, not with me. But what I use at work look a little something like this where it's just a dry erase. Sometimes I'll even use a Word document, which I feel like is the electrical version of dry erase and I always make sure to have a calendar that has the tasks that I need to complete on a given day. So for example, like on here, I wrote client one, client one. So it's like, I'd see that client on that day. Meetings, client two, review a treatment plan. Not everything will be due date focused, but you wanna have something where you can plan. And being a social worker, your calendar may be a little bit different than other jobs in that I suggest never writing in pen unless you're really comfy with the white out because things will change and you can sit down at the beginning of the month and have a whole plan for what you're gonna do on each day and it's not, it's not gonna happen like that. So that's why I like dry erase or using a little word doc where I can just backspace. Some of my coworkers use pen and then white out, but there's a lot of white out on that calendar if you use pen. The next social work essential, and this is something that you'll probably see sitting in my bag throughout vlogs because I can never wear it into jail because if I do, it sets off the metal detector. So I always just keep it in my bag and put it on when I actually get to jail. But that's 
a lot. Now for me, it's especially essential because I don't have my phone on me throughout the day. Usually you could have your phone on you throughout the day, but a watch is so much easier to see what time it is. And there's just a lot of things that are important to have accurate times for as a social worker. So maybe you are beginning a client session and you just have to do a quick like, oh, okay, 11 o'clock, write that down so you know what time you saw a client. If you are calling somebody, you write down what time you called them. If someone reports something to you and you need to know exactly when it was reported to you and put on your radar so then you can document what you do beyond that, that you need to do. I feel like that was just a generalist way to talk about crises that you could come across, but really it just depends on what situation you're gonna be in, like what the serious events will be. So for example, for me, let's say I'm going about my day and someone reports to me that they have injured themselves in some kind of way. I need to know exactly what minute I become aware of that so that then I can say, okay, I did this at this time, I did this at this time, a little CYA in social work. Cover your booty. <laughs> Watches are important because time is important. And this was $10 off Amazon. So like you don't have to be bougie with it. The next essential is kind of a little two in one, but get really comfortable with looking like this throughout a day. <laughs> pen and paper in hand. There's so many reasons that you just need paper easily accessible to you throughout a day. And these little pads are nice because it's kind of like a clipboard built in with this little cardboard bag. And so basically every social worker I've known have had this kind of pad, the bigger like full paper size version of it and post-it notes just always kind of within reach. Now I will say these are often provided. Like my supervisor when I was in BSW internship gave me some, my MSW internship gave me some. They actually gave me so much that I'm still using those to this day. So you don't necessarily like need to go and get these on your own, but you will definitely become very comfy with carrying them around. And I think why it's so important is just because lots of times there will be so many things, different types of things happening in your day and it can be hard to just keep that all in your brain. So say you're, it's like having me creative with these situations. You're out of school and you're walking down the hallway on the way to pick up one of your kids that you're gonna bring back to a session. And as you're walking, a teacher pops out of her classroom and says, hey, I have this kid that I wanna refer to you for this reason. In the moment you can think, okay, sounds good. I'll remember that and keep walking. And then it will never pop back up into your head again. But if you have a paper and pad in hand, you can be like, oh, this teacher, this kid, let me follow up with that. And then it's written so that when you forget, you can look back and you'll remember. They're good to have on hand if you're someone who does session notes. I often don't write much down in session because I try to do my documentation right after I have a session. And so I don't necessarily forget in the meantime. And I find that for me, it's easier to do session and have like the connection, like engage with the client if I'm not writing. But if there is something that is worth remembering, jot it down real quick while you're in session with a little pad like this. To-do lists, this is the perfect to-do list size. Absolutely perfect to-do list size. If I had the ones that I actually have at work, you would see they're like this thick, like all the way down with just various to-do lists. And it'll be like Thursday to-do list. And it'll have 10 things and maybe three of them will get done. And so then Friday to-do list, I'll have the seven things again, plus some new things tasks that pop into your mind that you need to do, write it down so you don't forget. But then also, especially as an intern, but also as social workers, it's good to have a running list through the week of questions or topics that you want to bring up in supervision whenever you get supervision. So oftentimes supervision will look like maybe an hour set out of every week or every other week where you get to ask questions and you get to collaborate and ask for maybe help with a tough client case or something like that. And it's a lot easier to write those questions down or those thoughts down throughout the week so that then you can just bring your pad with you to supervision instead of showing up to supervision and be like, oh, I knew I was thinking about something this week, but I don't know what it is. Put all of your thoughts on paper is the main point of this essential. Another essential that may be provided to you, we just talked about how we put all of our thoughts on paper, have some sort of folder that you can wrap around it. Obviously a big thing in social work is confidentiality. And if I do session notes, if it is a kid that I'm writing down notes during session in, I can't just leave that sitting on the desk face up for everyone to see. Have something you can wrap around it. These little manila folders have become life for me and that I can write whatever I want to, slip the paper in there, do this. Now it's not just open for everyone's eyes who walk into my office. Of course, they're also good for organizing. I think that's what they're made for, but it's like a little confidentiality shield because you want to be careful about that. The sixth essential, I think, I stopped keeping count and now I don't remember, is to have some sort of small items that bring you joy. Always have something that brings you joy in your bag that you can easily access if you are just in desperate need of some little reason to smile. Both of the examples that I grabbed for my bag right now, I actually could not bring to work with me because they would be considered contraband and it would be illegal. <laughs> but Fun little beverages are something that you could have. I couldn't bring these because glass and aluminum, but I can bring bottles. And so sometimes I'll get juices or sparkling waters that come in a bottle and just bring it to work with me. M&Ms. 
peanut M&Ms I'll get a lot. Maybe it's even like a fun ring that you wear that you just love, fun bracelets you wear that you love. If you're someone who likes fidgets, having like a fun fidget for yourself, just something that can bring you from like a negative three to a negative two if needed throughout the day. If you are feeling tired or overwhelmed, then you can be like, ah, my peanut M&Ms. Or you can be like, ah, my fun bracelet is making me happy now. It is essential to have things that you love, things that bring out your personality just around you. The seventh essential, assuming I counted correctly, is to have people that you can talk to and process with. Now, obviously, as I already mentioned with confidentiality, this is another thing to be mindful of as you are processing. But if you are going into an internship or a new social work job, that's a lot to handle by yourself. And so whenever I say people to process with, I don't mean your Instagram story. Obviously I have a YouTube channel, but I'm not talking about the kind of processing I do on here. I'm meaning like the deep emotional stuff. You need to have someone that you can share what your day was like with and who can support you, whether that is your parents, a close friend, a roommate, someone in your cohort. Have someone who knows what your day is like who can support you because you obviously can't talk about every single detail of your day to just the random people around you, but you need to have some people who truly know you. And especially if you're new, there's a big chance that whenever you you start your internship or your job, you're gonna be exposed to things that you haven't before or in a different degree than you have before, or it may just hit a little different than it has before because that's part of social work and it can be an adjustment. It can be something really that can hit you harder than you may think it will. So support system, absolutely essential. Essential number eight is that you need to have regulated time that has absolutely nothing to do with social work. And you have to be strict about this. And so it is so tempting and it's so hard too when you're in school, because I felt this in grad school where I would get up in the morning, do some grad school work before going to jail. I would go to jail, do my internship, come back from jail, sit down, do some more grad school work, go to sleep, wake up, do it all again. And it's a little even extra harder in the fact that my favorite hobby has to do with social work too. But you need to have times in your life that you are disconnected from social work and from the work that you're doing. Honestly, this can be hard to do because you're gonna come to care about your clients and you're gonna come to care about the areas that you're working in. And it feels like too good of a privilege to be able to disconnect. Like for me, my clients who are being detained, it's like, okay, yeah, cool, I could come and lay out by the pool for two hours because I guess that makes me happy, but like they're still just sitting in jail. Maybe this isn't everybody thing, but I find that sometimes people have guilt about disconnecting. But why it's so important is because it can't be your whole life, right? Obviously in social work, we dive into the deeper, darker parts of society. And if that's all you're surrounded by, then those kind of amplify and it feels like it's the only thing out there. So you need to have regulated times in your day that you're not gonna think about it, that you're gonna do something fun or even just something neutral. You're gonna go for a walk, you're gonna call somebody, you're gonna watch a TV show, read a book, lift some weights, crochet, cook. I'm running out of hobbies, I can't think of other things. But it's absolutely essential to have time scheduled in to make sure that you do it that has absolutely nothing to do with your internship or with your job or with social work as a whole. And that's called preventing burnout. <laughs> The last social work essential of this video is that you need to have a sense of self-awareness so that you can truly check in on how you're doing. And this goes with the previous essentials that I was just mentioning and about preventing burnout. But if you come home from a day, just do a quick little self check-in. If you're like, I feel absolutely drained, tired, exhausted, and like I'm on a breaking point, Sounds like we need to do something about that before the breaking point happens. And I think what's especially hard with if you are becoming an intern or starting a new job is that you don't always feel burnout or the overwhelming, overwhelming feelings creeping up on you until they have fully crept up on you. And so being self-aware and being mindful of your body and how it feels and how you are truly doing is so super important. I plan on making more videos kind of related to that upcoming. So subscribe if you feel like that's not something you're good at, because honestly, I'm still learning too but there are people who are experts on that kind of thing and about self-care and mindfulness and preventing burnout, especially as social workers. And I need you to take that tip just as seriously as you take the little pins and papers that I showed you because I care about you and I want you to be successful in whatever endeavor you're facing. And the non-concrete, the more abstract essentials that I mentioned are truly just as crucial. If you have any questions, of course, ask them. If you have any videos you would like me to make, of course, let me know if you'd like to not wait. I've already made a lot of social work videos on my channel or vlogs. So if you'd like to hang around, definitely do so. But I love you. I support you. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time.